on the count of three, I want you to shout, don't think, shout the emotion that describes the way you're feeling today. One, two, three. One more time. A different emotion. One, two, three. One more time. A different emotion. One, two, three. Needless to say, there is a lot of emotion in this room right now. And can we go back one slide? When I was a kid, these guys rocked my world. They clearly had a lot of talent. They were good musicians. Maybe the best band in the history of music. Does anybody agree? But you know what else they had? These four young men had emotional diversity. Each of them was capable of conjuring up a wide range of emotions. But together, wow, they could cover some serious ground. And when I was 13 years old, I was sitting in the living room watching Monday Night Football with my dad. And Howard Cosell came on and he said, some bad news, John Lennon's been shot in front of his home, the Dakota Hotel in New York City. And I didn't know that that kind of thing happened. And my father started to cry. And I looked at my father and I started to cry. And we really, I don't remember who won the game. It changed the world when the Beatles died. Now, we've got a we've got a, a lot of problems on our planet. And to solve these problems, we are going to have to dig deep into that whole range of emotions that you just shouted out, that whole range of emotions that the Beatles have sung about. Because to solve problems, we need resilience. Now, you've all heard about biodiversity and its role in, in building resilience. You've all heard that we need a lot of life, we need a lot of animals and plants on our planet in order to have resilience, in order to solve problems, in order to deal with the changes that are ahead. We have to protect what's in our oceans. We have to protect what's in our forests. We have to work hard to take care of biodiversity. And you've heard about economic diversity. We can't have one economy based on one product. We can't just grow corn. We need to have a diversity in our economics. We need lots of small businesses. We need lots of new small businesses. And we need cultural diversity. We can't all be the same. We need people who think and act differently. We need new ideas. We need new languages, new ways of talking about things. But we also need emotional diversity. Emotional diversity within each of us and within each group, within each dance troupe and rock band, within each family, within each organization. We need emotional diversity. We need people who are capable of the highs and the lows. We need people who are showing up and sitting at their desk and working hard from nine to five. We need people who are out of the box, creative thinkers. We need people who break the rules. We need people who charge ahead. We need people who sit at the piano and work hard day after day to get just that right note, just at the right time. We need people who smile in the crowd. When everybody is glum, it takes that one person to stand up and take off their shirt and start dancing and change the mood in the room, right? Because we have a lot of stress in modern society. There's stress everywhere. You wake up in the morning to the sound of your alarm clock and the stress begins. You go through your long day at school, at work, in traffic, 
trying to make ends meet, working out your problems, and you deal with this stress. How do you deal with it? You better have some emotional diversity to deal with it. You better be able to find that place inside yourself or outside of yourself where you can go and sit and get quiet and reduce the stress. Because we know every medical doctor in the world will tell you stress causes disease. Chronic stress kills brain cells. Now, neuroscientists have pointed their attention at our emotions. And we now know way more about emotions than we've ever known. We can study happiness, we can study compassion, we can study fear, and we can study stress. Using modern technology in the top medical schools in the world, we're able to look inside our own brains. And this generation is the first generation that has a decent user's guide to your own brain. It's a phenomenal time to be a human being and to learn about who we are. We're drilling down to the level of the neuron in a way that we've never been able to do before. We're understanding the exquisite, magical diversity and abundance in our own minds. Now, some people are taking this information and they're using it to get you to buy stuff. So neuroscience can be used for neuromarketing. Neuroscience can be used to sell you things that you may not want or need. Neuroscience can be used to sell you things and ideas that may not be good for you. And that's happening. And we don't even know it. This, this modern phenomenon of neuroscience is being used for us and against us. We're told that happiness comes in a bottle. We're told that love comes in a can. I know and you know that's not true. <laughs> Where does love come from? Where does happiness come from? It comes from inside of us. It comes from being out in the world. It comes from taking a chance. It comes from hitting that river going down to the beach, getting up in the bow of the boat and saying, I'm the king of the world. It comes from real experiences from within yourself. It comes from music you make, dances you come up with, food you prepare. It comes from being in nature and it comes from being with those that you love. That's where love and happiness come from. It comes from getting out there and touching the world, letting it touch us, and forming those nostalgic moments. Visiting the octopus's garden, as Ringo Starr might call it, underneath the sea. Now, what I want from you is I want you to step right up to that edge. I want you to step right up to that blue line. I want you to own all of your emotions. They're yours. I want you to get to know them. Embrace them, the highs and the lows and the in-betweens, those outside-the-box moments when everybody's going, whoa, what's she doing? That's weird. Step up to that. Step right up to that edge. Don't go over the edge. Because if you go over the edge, you may end up in trouble. You may hurt yourself. You may end up in jail or otherwise. But step right up to put your toes on the edge and push the limits of what's possible. Use all of your emotions and own them. Don't let anybody take that away from you. Don't let anybody tell you how you should feel. For me, it's the ocean. I'm inspired by water. Stepping out to the edge of the sea puts my mind at ease. And when I put my mind at ease, I have big ideas. My brain connects to itself in a way that doesn't happen anywhere else. And I have insights and creativity. And I feel large. 
I feel tall. I feel smart. I feel creative. And those are the moments I love at the edge of the water. Where is that place for you? Where is that edge that you can step out on? The revolution that we are creating here at this event is all about love. It's all about your emotions. It's about embracing them, owning them, loving your own emotions, sharing them, and rocking the world. So thank you very much.